So I'm going to hit complete. And it actually did that really quick because um, well, there's only two things here. So if we now, it defaulted to entire project of the cost model. It recognized there was nothing happening in the schedule. So really important distinction between these two things is that if we click on the schedule just briefly for a moment, you'll see those were the, the five activities we added in the schedule. There is no uncertainty. So it's just a singular output, single answer. Um, so you get the same date shown in, in, on that axis at the moment. Start date, the duration and the cost shown at the bottom. Now I'm pointing this out just for the purpose of clarity and avoidance of doubt. This cost down here on the schedule output is for a resource loaded schedule and resource loaded cost and any intervening risks from the risk register that there may have been added. Whereas what we're interested in here today is where it took us to actually, which was the cost. So these coins, make sure you're on that and then you can see the breakdown structure that we have already created. So we've got project A with nothing in it at the moment. Project B should have some costs. And there we are, the total costs for all items underneath. If we expand that, we could look at just general site labor as a cost or indeed the specialists. So just remember when you're looking at the drill down of these things, and if you're starting to get interested in confidence intervals, which is this 0% um, to 100%, i.e. the confidence of achieving a particular cost or a particular price on a particular element, remember that you can't sum total, say the P80 of the specialists and add it to the P80 of the site labor and then expect those two things to equal the same sum together p80 on the labor that's not how statistical analysis works that's not how portfolio effect works so if you want the overall cost um to, for purpose of contingency then i'd recommend going to the highest level where all these things are sort of summed together in the aggregate you want to be focusing just on that just as a little tip if you do have a need for looking at the the, the build up of how do each um, sub part of the cost model add into the next part and the next part and the next part if you need to be able to do that kind of calculation then this is just a reminder that the only value that you can actually tangibly do that on is this one here that i'm hover highlighting with the mouse it's called the mean you can add the mean of specialists the mean of site labor and expect them to also equal uh, the overarching labor sum together or the project b um, you can get all of the means together and they will total the the right amount okay you can't do it with p values that is just for a statistical understanding of um how confident can you be that any given piece of this jigsaw puzzle will cost up to the p80 say of um 1410 dollars say so we're reading that number off there and what we what this actually means is that you are finding 80% of all the iterations out of a thousand iterations that we randomized through the Monte Carlo are going to fall somewhere between zero, this lowest value, which was the minimum of 700. So somewhere between 700 and 1,410. And then 20% exceeded that point up to a maximum value. 1,942. That's all that means. OK, so that was the distribution graph and introduction to it. Um, and if you want to know more about the distribution graph, but perhaps before everyone uh, has actually committed to running the full simulation, you can sort of see early previews of that. And we call that the real time analyzer. And we're going to be co covering that in the next video. So that's in video 10, um, where we'll also be starting to look at linking uh, cost to time as well. So that's quite an important video. Now, some people might come looking for some particular things about the distribution graph. So I'm going to give you a few pointers on other videos in this series that you could go to next. So uh, video 17 is how do you use the distribution comparison feature in Safran Risk. Video 23 covers looking at 
the option on the distribution graph for just seeing the remaining cost versus the remaining and the actual spent to date combined together. And then also uh, video 26 is another good one for distribution graph because in there I show you how to find uh, the aesthetics, use the options cog in the top right corner, how to change the colors, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe add, add your own annotations, but maybe most importantly, every company is different and you're gonna wanna select your own focus value, your, your own P value or confidence interval. Some people want P75, someone's gonna want P80, someone just P50 and so forth. So that's all covered in video 26, okay?